back to the Rocks and Change YouTube channel. My name's Fleur and today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful chainmail weave called Byzantine. Now Byzantine is a staple for a lot of people. Um, it's probably one of the first ones that they learn because there is so many variants from it. It's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful weave. Um, it is known as other names. You can get sort of like ready-made chains that look like this, but there's nothing better than making it yourself. It needs jump rings of an aspect ratio of about 3.5. And um, the examples that I've done, um, obviously we'll show you a little bit closer in a second. So the examples that I've done are, um, I've done one in an aspect ratio of 3.5, one in 3.6, one in 3.7. And as you can see, they're three different thicknesses as well. So I've uh, had a little play around with the wire diameters as well. So let's get your pliers and let's get started. Okay, so here we are with the weave, uh, so you can see it a little bit closer now. So as you can see, it is an absolutely beautiful, decorative weave, really beautifully decorative, and a really dense weave as well, without being too complicated. So like we said before in the intro, there's lots of different variants to this weave, but this is the sort of like the original Byzantine weave. So you can use this as a platform to learn those variants, um, or just use it as it is a beautiful weave. So the sizes of jump rings that I've used in these three examples are, I've used a 3.25 with um, this first one here, and they're made on a 0.9 wire, which gives you an aspect ratio of 3.6. These ones are 3.5 in a diameter, made on a 1 mil wire, gives you that perfect aspect ratio of 3.5. And these ones are um, 4.5, in a diameter made on a 1.2 um, wire, which gives you an aspect ratio of about 3.7. Okay, so you can see they're they're very, very very similar in aspect ratio, but obviously you can scale up and scale down as much as you want. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make in this larger size, just so you can see it a little bit easier. But it's as equally as easy in all three sizes. Um, there is There are kits to this on my website. I'll link them in the description below. Um, and they will be in all three sizes in either up to an eight inch bracelet or a nine inch bracelet. Um, but roughly you're gonna be using about 200 for, for the smaller one and about 150. For, for these two, depending on the length of the of the finished piece that you're looking for and the class that you use as well. Okay, so as normal with your um, chain mail, you're going to need two pairs of chain nose or flat nose pliers. Now I have done a video on how to open and close a jump ring properly with um, what pliers you can use and things like that. And I'll link it um, above now in that top right hand corner. I'll pop a little card there to that YouTube video. So feel free to um, go and watch that when you uh, when you have a few spare minutes. Um, you're going to need um, something to use as a handle. I tend to use safety pins because I find them so easy that once you've done a starter weave, you can put a little bit of paper on there or a little tag on there saying what the weave is and what size jump rings you used. Um, I always tend to have a knotting all to hand or a piece of scrap wire just to help you decipher which jump rings are going where. Um, it's a lot easier or to make a little a hole in the chain mail that you can see where the next jump rings go in and of course we're going to need our jump rings themselves so I've got like I say the 4.5 on a 1.2 wire here and um, so 4.5 is the inner diameter of these jump rings so to get started we're going to take our safety pin and I've pre-closed just two of those jump rings and I'm going to add them onto the safety pin now with Byzantine you always need three sets of two before you can fold back into a Byzantine knot. So if you always remember that you, it always happens in pairs this weave, so whatever you do, there's always a pair of jump rings involved and you always need three sets of two to be able to fold them back. So I'm gonna pop my first, my second set in because the first set's already there. So this is jump ring pair number two that are going in. And then jump ring pair number three. Going in now. Okay, so I've now got 
three sets of two. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold on to jump ring pair number one and I'm going to let jump ring pair number three just fall either side of my hand. Now please excuse my closures um, today because when I video these um, weaves my arms are quite far away from me and I can't, I'm looking at the camera rather than looking at the actual um, weave itself. So I've got jump ring pair number three um, sitting either side of my hands, not my fingers, and I'm going to pick up my knotting awl or a spare piece of wire, whatever you've got to hand, and I'm going to just scoop up jump ring pair number two. And when I let those, um, that jump ring pair number two, when I hold those, can you see that the th um, third pair, which were here, which were at the top, have fallen down either side? Oh, focus. There we go. It's fallen down either side of jump ring pair number one where the handle is. When you give those a squeeze, what happens is, jump, oh, we're struggling with the, the actual focus today, camera. Come on, love. Can you see how jump ring pair number three, and that were up here, and I folded them back, they're now higher than jump ring pair number one, which is down in the bottom here. Okay, let me see if I can bring that a little bit closer. So if I can, there we go. So you can see jump ring pair number two, jump ring pair number one are on the outside. There and jumping pair, uh, sorry, jumping pair number three are on the outside, and one is right in the middle. There we go. Now, when we turn this the correct way round, when we open up jumping pair number two, what happens is I'm just going to let that go down again. So, if it won't, so the first one's always the most difficult one to put in because there's no pattern to, to sort of like see. Um, pick up jump ring pair number two, give them a squeeze, and when you open up jump ring pair number two, what you'll find is jump ring pair number three are sticking up a little bit higher. If I just put my knotting all in there, you'll see. Okay, so you can see that there they are. They're in the middle there. So we've got, if we remember the, the sequence that we've got, the ones that are on the actual knotting all is jump ring pair number three. The two that are the V on the side is jump ring pair number two. And the one that's on the handle is obviously jump ring pair number one. So I'm going to take that knotting all out and you can see we've got a direct gap now to put our next two jump rings. So the next two jump rings are going to attach to jump ring pair number three in the middle of jump ring pair number two. So you can see as soon as I put that jump ring in, it locks that Byzantine knot into place. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and close, close that one up. And as we said before, whatever we do in Byzantine, we always do them in pairs. So I'm gonna pop another jump ring through exactly the same gap and there's lots of room to, to get that in there. And you can see now how we've got our first by half Byzantine knot. Okay, I'm just going to close that jump ring pair a little bit better. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we need our next set of three. So we've already got our first pair of the three. I'm now going to add in the second pair of three. That's jump ring pair number two going in. And now jump ring pair number three. Okay, so you can see there, one, two, this is the third pair that's going in. There's one. Let's go. So we're back now to the beginning where we have our three sets of jump rings. So again, I'm going to hold on to jump ring pair number one. Let jump ring pair number three fall either side. Pick up jump ring pair number two. Give them a squeeze. Give all of those th uh, four jump rings, jump ring pair number three and number one, a squeeze. When you give them a squeeze, I'm just going to take my five out because I think the camera's trying to focus on those. When you give them a squeeze and then open up jump ring pair number two, they've presented themselves further forward anyway. So when you're looking down into the weave from that angle, if I just bring it a little bit closer, there is actually four jump rings in there, but the two that are at the top are the ones that were 
up here to start with, so jump ring pair number three. So they fold back and they come back up into the middle of jump ring pair number two. Okay, so that's where my next pair of jet rings are going. And we can see that it's correct because it's pulled straight away into that lovely Byzantine knot. I'm just going to hold that there, pick up my next jump ring, and feed that through that little gap. And close. And then again. Pick up my next jump ring because it has to be, has to have a friend, it has to have a pair, it has to be a pair of jump rings in there. And I've now put my second pair in. So now we've got what we probably class as a full Byzantine segment, but you can use them as little segments like that. They're absolutely beautiful. But what you then need to do if you want to carry on doing the weave and do the whole bracelet is you just carry on adding three sets of two before you fold back always remembering that the one that's just pulled the byzantine knot together so this pair here is always the first set of the next set of three okay if you only fold back every other one what happens is that goes to a box weave um, so it's a completely different weave so if you want the byzantine weave then you need three sets of two to be able to fold it back i'm just going to move this out of the way and bring back the example um, and as you can see, then, so you just carry on doing your little three sets of two and folding back all the way along till you get to the length of your bracelet. And then to attach the clasp, I've just gone down to a smaller jump ring. So these are three, mil, uh, three and a half mil jump rings. So uh, one on the clasp here, straight into the two that was on the end. And then one single jump ring onto this end. And that's there how it, how it clasps up. Okay, so you can use whichever clasp you like. I like these lobster claws because I think they look quite um, nice against the chain mail weaver. Don't disrupt your eye. So I hope you've liked that short tutorial on how to make the Byzantine weave. Um, if you uh, have liked it, I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up uh, and maybe a little comment. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please think about doing that because I've got lots and lots of videos coming up um, of different chainmail weaves, different knotting, different tool reviews, that kind of thing, a few vlogs coming up as well. So hit the notification button so that you are told when the next uh, Rocks and Chains video is going to go live on YouTube. And until next time, I'll see you very soon.